Now to that debate on Japan's energy policy. Government leaders are expected to work out a new strategy by summer. The accident at Fukushima Daiichi raised countless concerns about atomic energy. Experts are scheduled to submit a proposal in May, but they have yet to agree on what role, if any, nuclear energy will play. Chie Yamagishi joins us in the studio. So Chie, Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda has been vowing to reduce Japan's reliance on nuclear energy. How is his government tackling this issue? The debate over this country's energy policy started soon after last year's disaster. Then last October, Noda's government set up a committee on energy policy. Committee members focused their attention on the role nuclear power should play in Japan's energy portfolio. They staked out different positions on the issue. Take Tetsunari Iida, for example. He's an engineer who used to work in the nuclear power industry. Now, he's an opponent of atomic energy. Nuclear plants generate radioactive waste, something we can't deal with and it's impossible to reduce the risk of an accident to zero. I believe nuclear energy is unacceptable from an ethical point of view. Now, listen to Professor Satoru Tanaka, President of the Atomic Energy Society of Japan. Nuclear plants generate a stable supply of energy, and the costs of nuclear fuel and electricity are relatively low. They also pose few problems in terms of global warming, and would allow Japan to contribute to the world with its expertise in the nuclear field. So, Chia, definitely some divided opinions there. Now, how is that affecting the recommendation made by the members of the Committee of Energy Policy? Officials with the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry used the committee's deliberations to outline five scenarios for what Japan's power generation ratio could look like in 2030. Four of them envision nuclear power ratios ranging from 0 to 35%. The fifth proposal is quite different. It says the government should not define Japan's energy portfolio. Instead, it says utilities should figure out the type of power they generate based on the choices of consumers. Ministry officials are drawing up possible outcomes for each scenario, except the fifth one. They are getting experts to look at factors such as the price of electricity, Japan's trade balance, employment, and CO2 emissions. But several committee members are criticizing the way these scenarios are compiled. A new energy policy should include not just uh, the snapshot on 2030, but also 2040, 2050. We have to uh, uh, draw up some options which show the long-term vision of the energy policy. We should uh, make uh, more quality uh, qualitative options, for instance, what kind of policies we have to change or what kind of new technology we have to develop. Hiroshi Takahashi and other committee members say the debate's current framework is warped. For example, two members could support a policy that sets nuclear energy at 20% in 2030. But after that, one of them might expect a gradual reduction to zero while the other could push to maintain or even increase the proportion in the long term. They say, instead of focusing on simple figures, the committee should discuss broader issues that will shape the future of Japanese society. One of them is electricity market deregulation. Right now, the country's 10 electricity companies essentially control the market. Some committee members say these regional monopolies should be broken up to allow consumers to choose who they buy their energy from. We've been talking about the committee members. Many citizens also want to have a say in the debate on energy policy. Where is this side of the story headed? Prominent Japanese figures, including journalists, actors and writers, are promoting the idea of a national referendum. Their group is called Let's Decide Together. Members are collecting signatures for a petition. 
The debate over nuclear power is a crucial issue. Each person should think about it and make a decision in a responsible way. Debates about energy in Japan are happening on different levels. The main challenge facing government leaders is the need to reflect a wide variety of opinions in their final decision. All right, thanks, Chie. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi.